With the first day of pre-season testing done and dusted in Bahrain, Formula 1 is well and truly back. My name is Nick Golding here on Racing News 365. I am joined by Racing News 365 lead editor, our man on the ground in Bahrain. And if you are eagle-eyed, you might have spotted him in the recent Drive to Survive trailer, Mr. Ian Parks. Ian, F1's back in session, but it's still Red Bull Max Verstappen on top. Hello, everybody. And it's uh, an absolute pleasure to be here in Bahrain, I have to say. Uh, working for Racing News 365 now. And uh, yeah, let's not talk too much about that trailer. Uh, people will get to see what you're referring to uh, when I dare say they watch the episodes, which of course the series coming out on Friday this week. Um, do we use the word ominous to <laughs> start pre-season testing with? And I guess you can say, yes, we do. Bearing in mind that Max was... 1.1 seconds clear of McLaren's Lando Norris. Carlos Sainz just a tenth of a second back in third position in his Ferrari. But that was a very impressive opening day from Max. Uh, a good number of laps clocked up as well. Uh, he looked on it from the outset. Red Bull looked on it from the outset. They did say that the RB20 had its revolutionary lines, shall we say, and this has quite clearly come to the fore. I remember when I sat down with Christian Horner for a um, Christmas dinner, pre-Christmas pre dinner in December, and he said then that the RB20 would be more evolutionary rather than revolutionary. Well, I think we know from the launch and what we saw of that car with its side pods as well, that it definitely looked a bit more revolutionary than evolutionary. They've done a heck of a job with that car. And also, Red Bull, they're not holding back. They were so dominant last season, but they made a lot of changes when you look at the RB19 to the RB20. And you mentioned there the side pods. Obviously, today they run almost like a letterbox side pod. Do you think this is something we're actually going to see tomorrow and maybe even next week? It looks like those side pods have really made quite a difference. And as you say, the letterbox inlet air intake is, again, very different from what we've seen previously. We, you look at uh, Mercedes, that's got a little, kind of like curve shape to it. You look at Ferrari, that's more vertical. They've, each team has gone for very different solutions, it appears, with regards to those side pods. Red Bull, as we know, have considerably narrowed down the structure of its side pod. It's not a zero side pod like Mercedes introduced in 2022 and run way through that season following the introduction of the new aerodynamic regulations and they did them and that they then persisted with in 2023 which we now know was the wrong route to take uh, as they immediately recognized if you can recall after the opening qualifying session of last season at the Bahrain Grand Prix Red Bull's definitely done something different it looks clever it looks innovative and from everything that we can see so far whatever those side pods are doing with regards to the aerodynamic structure of the car, with regards to the airflow towards the rear, it looks like it has had a good impact so far and is something you would suggest they can only build upon. You will see mentioned, obviously, Max was so good today. Um, he had the entire day today. Sergio Perez, obviously, gets to drive for the first time tomorrow. You mentioned their Mercedes as well. Um, only George Russell was driving today. We'll see Lewis tomorrow as well. Mercedes got a lot of laps on the board today, but not very good in terms of the timesheets. Are they sandbagging or, you know, should Mercedes be concerned? Yeah, don't be worried by that. They have a lot more to come. I had a quick chat with uh, Toto Wolff, the Mercedes team principal, post-session. And I asked him, please tell me this, or I said to him, please tell me there's more to come from your car. Of course there is. It's the first day of testing. They're, they're just going through the motions, a lot of the teams. And we know Mercedes has done something innovative with this, the, with this year's car, the front wing, that I'm sure we're going to touch on as well in this video. It's very different. Um, and yes, they're just, as I say, going through the motions, plenty more to come. Can they touch Red Bull at this stage? It's a bit too early to say. Let's hope, fingers crossed, that by the time we see qualifying this year, compared to last year, that they are a hell of a lot closer. You mentioned their Mercedes' innovative front wing, to say the least. It has been deemed as legal, but there are a few 
unhappy people in the paddock, to say the least. Talk about the front wing and why is it causing you know such a stir? Basically because of its structure. And they've adapted a very different platform to attach that structure to the car. And the FIA has looked at it. And in fairness to Mercedes, as Toto Wolff pointed out in the afternoon press conference here at the Bahrain International Circuit, they've liaised with the FIA every step of the way. It's not something that they just thought of off the cuff. Oh, yeah, we'll apply it to the car. Let's see how it goes. Is it legal? Is it legal? Well, we're not quite sure, but we'll let others determine that as and when we run it. No, that's not the case. Um, they have, as I say, gone through the motions with the FIA. They've followed the protocols, followed the regulations as far as they're concerned. And they, at this stage, are very confident that that front wing will pose no problem should there be any kind of protest from one of its rivals over the course of the Bahrain Grand Prix weekend. Now, obviously, testing is in Bahrain, and one of the reasons why everyone loves Bahrain is when it goes under the lights. It's the first time we've seen all the cars underneath the lights. For you, which livery popped out? You know, obviously, Stake F1 have got a very bold design this year. You know, what were your favourites from today? I actually do like the Stake F1 livery, I've got to say, but it did look under the lights as if it had got a bit too much Flovis paint running across it, given that fluo green that they've got uh, embossed on the car. It was very different. It was very striking. I thought, uh, to give it its full name, the Visa Cash App RB livery as well, kind of caught the eye. And Aston Martin, once it threw a can of paint over that car, as you saw, if you were seen in the pictures late on, they threw a lot of Flovis paint on that uh, AMR24. And it was nearly all green. The, the carbon that they'd got on that car the black carbon had disappeared under this sea of green paint. And of course, that looked very, very different and very striking. Of course, we know they're not going to have the slightest paint to the Grand Prix. That's obvious. But yes, that definitely caught the eye, but perhaps for all the wrong reasons on this occasion. You mentioned that RB, a team who have also you know, caused a little bit of controversy during the winter break, particularly with Zach Brown. But Daniel Ricciardo, P4 today, less than a second behind Max. He was very close to Carlos Sainz. You know, are they a team who've really caught the attention of a lot of people today? Daniel was one of the few drivers that actually conducted a post-session uh, conference with the media here. And in fairness to him, he was preaching a little bit of caution. He said that everything looked good. They were quite happy with how the car had run. However... He did think that other teams around them had a lot more to give. And while he did not feel at this stage that that car was necessarily at the front of the midfield, which is a position that they desperately want to be this season, he felt that they were somewhere in the mid-pack, most definitely, but could not quite ascertain as to yet which position specifically. I got the impression from, from what Daniel was saying that their car was, and he did indicate it as well, that it was more an evolution of last year's car when they were known as Alpha Tauri. But he did it also suggest that there was a lot more to give, there was a lot more to come. Perhaps not, we might not see it at the first Grand Prix in Bahrain next weekend. It could be a few steps along the way. But nevertheless, overall, there was a general feeling of confidence from him and from May's teammate as well, Yuki Tsunoda. So that's, for them, given their new identity, what they're hoping to present this year on track, they know they desperately want to make a step forward now that they have become slightly more aligned with its sister team in Red Bull, that they know they have to make progress. They can't afford to be running at the back like it was, uh, like they were last season. That's not the position for them. They have to be somewhere close to the front of that mud field. We've spoken a lot about the teams who are towards the top today. Let's now take a look at the bottom. And unfortunately, it was Haas. Uh, Kevin Magnussen, P17. Nico Hulkenberg, P18. Kevin was 4.3 seconds off max, but they did complete more laps than Red Bull. Was that Haas's strategy stay going for the long runs rather than you know showing their pace over one lap? I think there's a little bit, bit of concern amongst Haas early on. Yes, they did, as you say, go for long runs initially they looked okay 
on paper. The car is not that bad, you would hope, but it could be another season of struggle for, for Haas. We know that they made the team principal change over the winter, deciding to let Gunther Steiner go after his 10 years in charge and take what owner Gene Haas described as a more engineering-led approach with Ayo Kamatsu, given uh, what Ayo has done for the team over the eight years that uh, Haas has been on the grid. We know his engineering prowess, and it's going to take time for him to make his mark. I don't think we can expect too much of Haas this season. And arguably, when you consider that the cars this year will only take minor steps forward going into 2025 next season because of the team's focus on the 2026 change of regulations of a new power unit. It could be a difficult two years for Haas. We can only hope, because they are a decent team at the end of the day, we can only hope that they are going to do more going forward. But early on, it could, it could be difficult for them, that's for sure. Ending on you know a happier note, it's only day one of three. Tomorrow we obviously see, as we mentioned, Perez for the first time in the RB20 and also Hamilton, what is his final pre-season test for Mercedes. What are you, though, looking out for tomorrow? I think definitely Checker, uh, simply because is the car going to be more aligned with uh, his driving philosophy? We know last season that it clearly went away from him. He wasn't happy with it from certainly the Monaco Grand Prix onwards, whereas we know he had that crash in qualifying last year. And he lost all confidence, both a little bit in himself and most definitely towards the car. Yes, he went on to finish second in the Drivers' Championship for the first time in his career and give Red Bull a 1-2 in those standings for the first time in their history. But we know he was a long, 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 long way off Max Verstappen at the end of the day. So... Is the RB20 going to be more to his liking? Is he going to be able to pose more of a threat to Max, as we saw at the start of last season? Bearing in mind, pre-season last year, Checo came out of it quickest, and he went on to win two of the first four races of last season, and it looked at that stage as if we might have an intra-team battle, only for Max to simply run away with it after that from the fifth race onwards, when which was the Miami Grand Prix, when he came from ninth on the grid, when Checo was on pole, and he went on to overtake his teammate. And from that point, Checo was a different driver. We want to see Checo being a different driver again this season, but being more positive, more confident, and hopefully the car will give him that. As for Lewis, it's his last chance with Mercedes to be the eight-time champion that we know, or we believe, he wants to be. He has never said it publicly that that is his desire, but deep down, I'm sure that is a goal for him uh, to be that eight-time champion with Mercedes, hopefully before he then joins Ferrari next season. So those two guys on track, we're going to get a good idea as to where they are at going into the new season. Good stuff. Well, Ian, I can see it's night time now. Go get yourself back to the hotel. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. All the best. Take care. Cheers everyone for joining. Catch you tomorrow. For those watching, make sure you click that like button and subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell as well to keep up with all our content at Race News 365. And if you can't watch our content at the moment, if you're at work, for example, make sure you go on racenews365.com for all the pre-season testing coverage. We'll see you later.